So Al, we're having an impromptu conversation in front of a camera to talk about, um, I think in this case, possibly <coughs> disability rights. I should be okay. Well, it depends where we, we decide to take it. Mm. What do we want to do with this thing? Mm. But, but quite possibly. We could talk about all kinds of things, but that's one thing I thought we could talk about that I think you know more about than most people <laughs> and, uh, and have a few opinions about. So, you know, thought that maybe you could share some of your opinions about disability rights and the disability rights movement to people who don't necessarily know or um, understand what that is. So, what can you tell us about the disability rights movement, Mr. Shane? Uh-huh. Okay, well, I guess when what people might first think about when you say disability rights, is access. Right. And when we say access in disability work, most people might think about it as wheelchair ramps and elevators. For sure. Because that's been the biggest, this wheelchair ramps and elevators right. are the, the things that, that people are, and then the buttons on the doors, right? Like those kinds of things that they started to go yeah. off and to add when we were in university, right? And that was like a big yeah. thing at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it still is. For sure. It is there. Mm-hmm. But um, what a lot of people don't know is that uh, 90% of disabilities are invisible. Right. So what do you mean? So, I mean, like, Learning disabilities. Right. Uh, People with cognitive disabilities. Psychological disabilities. Right. Um, even people who are deaf or blind. Yeah, or hard of hearing. Oh, when you can't tell unless the person specifically identifies. Right. So, and I think. Right. Uh, wheelchair ramp isn't really benefiting a whole lot of the people who are identified as disabled. Right. Because most people who identify don't need wheelchair ramp to For, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean with, with websites, um, people always jump right to the blind, and it's like, oh, well, we, we think about the blind, and well, the, th that's a really important section of, of the population, but it's not like it's the majority of the disabled community. It's, it's in terms of, 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 uh, of people who have trouble accessing the web online, um, the blind, user, blind community is, is, a, is a, a, an incredibly mm. small fraction of, of the, the portion of, of people. Even when you include the, the, uh, the low vision, um, that's not mm. going to be a majority of, of the people who, who mm. have, have problems accessing the web online. R right. Right. Uh, yeah, people don't know what it's like here. Uh, intellectual disabilities. Right. Um, Which does not include people yeah. who just don't have a sense of humor or don't get the joke. Uh, no. We <laughs> will <laughs> don't get my joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, I guess in terms of, 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 of movements, so, how is how is a dis disability rights movement different from other movements? And how how uh, what is that? How do you define a movement? How do I define it? Um, that's a big question. Um, that's why we're asking it underneath the uh, um, the, the the grape the grapevine here, so we can go off and and and, and have some deep philosophical uh, impressions uh, from you this evening. Well, basically, it's a bit right movement trying to reframe impairment, which means any, any impairment is any kind of um, functionality that is deemed not normal. Right. right? 
of the individual. Of an individual he's seen as a social issue. Right. As an issue of accepting humans in all their diverse ways of functioning. Right. Without making that particular individual a problem. Right. The problem it shifts onto society and culture. Right. Do you think about why is it that we don't include those individuals like we include everyone else? Right. Right. Yeah, basically what I would describe it. Right, and and uh, and trying to go off and put things in context, like, well, why do we keep building buildings with stairs, and then sort of wonder why people, like, is is, is a problem the person who has a wheelchair, and and uh, and and that 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 person who is is uh, is their issue because they can't handle the stairs, or is it, is it the the building itself the problem, and the, our, our bylaws that actually that we're we're continuing to go off and to, to create buildings that that are that that uh, uh, simply go off and and, and uh, reinforce the the need to, to be able to 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 walk um, and to 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 not need to not use a ramp. Um, so I want to isn't only people using wheelchairs, right? Who still there a problem for? Right. Uh, anyone with any problem? For sure. I mean, it's a walk. Right, but it's difficult for them to go off and to I mean, primarily with young children and children. For sure. Oh. You know, even even people who are hauling um, uh, goods and services in, like the service entrances, if you've got a, a oh. package to get delivered or, or furniture to get delivered, oh. stairs are a real not nuisance. And if you can, oh. you know. Yeah, bike careers. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're usually in good enough shape that it's okay that they can go off and, you know, <laughs> walk up the stairs. Yeah, okay, he's got my career to get out of the house. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, um, and the thing is that I, I was, 